Okay, for our next trick, we're going to broadcast our own show uh, on the TV networks. Uh, so what we're going to do is we have three different execution agents, and they all have B and C are going to be a team, and A's got his own responsibilities. So the way that this works is we need to set the azimuth, the elevation, and the frequency of the dish into the correct position in order to get our signal out there. That is what A is going to handle. So let's go through and look at what A is doing first. So A is going to grab file 300 and 300. And this has the, the correct positions for each of them, the azimuth, the elevation, and the frequency. The so A is going to head over here and is going to copy the desired value for the azimuth into X and is going to replicate an agent. This one's going to be the one that's in charge of setting the azimuth. Uh, they're going to head over here where the the settings are. Uh, the azim register tells us what its current position is. And if we want to move it, you can't write to the azimuth register at all. You have a motor. And if you put a positive, if you send a positive number into the motor, then it'll move up one and if you set a negative into the motor it'll move down one so you have to if i want to move the azimuth to 150 i'd have to put a positive number in a motor 10 times i can't put 10 into the motor and it'll move 10 to, like 10 at once it can only move one position per right so what xa0 is going to do is it's going to figure out how many times do i need you to move whether positive or not so the first thing it's going to do is it's going to subtract this number from what is currently in the azimuth. It is minus 17. Uh, we need to move it down 17 times. And we're going to do, we're going to jump to the set motor block here. Elevation is going to be doing the same thing. The only difference is where it links to and where it grabs the value from because they're both motors. So I'm azimuth and elevation will both eventually end up in the set motor block. So the first thing that we want to do, or that the azimuth guy wants to do, is he needs to know whether we are moving up or down on the motor. So we do a test on X to see if it's above or below zero. And what that's going to do is that's going to put a value into T. If it is, uh, if T is zero, that means it was negative. And we want to actually turn that into a minus one so that we have minus one in T if it's negative. But then if T was positive, the test will set it to one already. We want minus one and one respectively in T, depending on whether it's positive or negative. Uh, and when we do that, uh, we then multiply the value by X. So minus minus to get the total number in T. The end result is that in the T register, we know how many times, whether it's positive or negative, we know how many times we need to write to the motor. So if it's negative, the two negatives in the calculation will cancel out and we have 17 in there. If it's positive, the two positives will multiply. It'll, it'll multiply, you know, if this was positive 17, it would multiply one by 17 to just end up with 17. The, this was just some, some funky uh, algebra, not even algebra, but funky math to get it so that we have in our T register, whether it's positive or negative, the number of times we need to write. So then we are going to write our value of X into the motor. We don't need to send specifically negative one or positive one. We just have to send a negative value or a positive value. Since X already knows that, we're just gonna keep sending X into the motor. So XA zero is just copying minus 17 into the, the motor as for T iterations. And you'll see that. And once we end it, we end up with our azimuth at 123, which was the desired value. Uh, the same thing's happening over at the elevation side, so that's not very interesting. The only last thing to note is the frequency doesn't have a motor. The frequency can be written to directly. So after XA deploys our agents into the azimuth and into the elevation uh, controllers, it's just going to copy uh, the frequency directly into the frequency register and he's done so then we're gonna jump back here to b and c so a is going off and sending these agents in they're gonna set the azimuth and the elevation properly and we have uh we have our dish in a position once it's in position is when we can start writing data if we try sending the data before it's in position uh you'll get errors because it's being sent to the wrong place. So what has to happen is B and C 
uh, take the time that they're setting up the position of the dish to start encrypting the data. So 301 is the movie that, uh, Am that Ember wants to send out, but it needs to be encrypted. And 199, the file that XC just picked up, is the encryption key. And what you do to encrypt the file is you add the value, so 1988 is the first value in our movie, to the first value of the encryption key. And that becomes our what we want to send out. But you result you you have the issue where a number can that sum of those two values can exceed ten thousand. And our registers have a limit of ten thousand. If we tried putting ten thousand and one in our X register from a sum, it would be nine 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 nine. You can't have beyond ten thousand. So we have to do a little bit more funky math here to try and keep our numbers under 10,000. And that's the way they the way they want it encrypted too. Let's say the sum of something would end up being 12,000. We would want to send 2,000. We would want to subtract 10,000 from that and just send 2,000 in the data. So it wraps around. Uh, but because our registers can't even handle that kind of math, we need to do it uh, a little bit oddly. So what ends up happening is uh, XC is going to send across the last three digits, so 445, and this is using the Swizz, and XB is going to do the same thing with its digits. It's going to take, it has 1988, it's going to put 988 in T, and it's gonna put one in X. So look, we'll look at that first. So XB has one in X and 988 in T. It's then going to add the last three digits from XC into T. So that's the sum of those two. And then it's going to add the five, so the thousandth place digit, into it, uh, its X. So now XB has six and four, one, four, three, three. We want to make sure that this sum, so this is this is actually 6,000, because we've added the thousandth place, the thousands place into the X register and the hundreds places into the T register. We want to make sure this sum doesn't exceed 10,000. So what we end up doing is we run a mod I on the X register. And mod, I think this is the first time I've gotten to use it so far. Mod arithmetic is remainder. So if you do, if you modulo or if you do a mod operator on a value, let's say it's 13 by 10, you divide it by 10 and you keep the remainder. You don't keep the actual result. So 13 mod 10 would be one with a remainder of three, so we'd keep the remainder three. And then if the value is under 10, it will be unchanged. It'll still, it'll be six, because six divided by 10 is zero with a remainder of six. So we care about the remainder. But if this was say 15 for some reason between the two of them, uh, mod i of 15 would be one with a remainder of five, that would lead five in the X. And then we multiply that value by a thousand to represent what it actually is, 6,000. And then we add those two values together and we're overwriting our video with that new value. So now it's 7433, that is our encrypted value for that. And we repeat that process for every single uh, value that's inside our encrypted file. Now you'll notice one thing that the file we have is a little bit longer than the encryption key and the instructions. This is all in the second issue of the Trash World News magazine as well, states that if you reach the end of your key. So if I if I focus on XC here, if you eventually reach the end of your key. This is taking a second. Uh, they just want you to wrap back around to the beginning again. So we've reached the end of it. We are then going to just wrap back to the beginning and continue reading. So XP is going to continue encrypting the video until we have encrypted everything. And we're we're just kind of dumbly anticipating and it's, it's not dumbly because it does end up working, but we are anticipating that by the time we finish encrypting the whole video, the azimuth and the elevation have been already set. We're not doing any kind of a check. We're just assuming that this process is going to take longer. Now that we have everything, we're going to kill XC because XC doesn't know when it's actually done. And then we're going to head in here and now we can start transmitting our data. So we jump back in our file to the beginning of the data packets and then we just write everything into the transmit log and you can see it filling out on the right side here. I know I'm covering the top of it, but you can see I am copying my data into there 
And once that's done, you can see we've completed our objectives down here. All we have to do is wipe our file and terminate ourselves to call it done. And there you go. A little bit of funky math in that one, but we did end up get, getting a pretty decent solution.